Sanctum Mysteries, brought to you by Bromo Seltzer. This is your host, bidding you welcome through the squeaking door. We're having a class reunion here tonight. Perhaps you'd like to meet some of our alumni. Oh, yes, everyone here has a degree. Her degree, to be exact. You see that fellow over there riding the hobby horse with his head tucked under his arm? Well, he was decapitated on an inner sanctum play a few weeks ago. Now he's auditioning. For the part of the headless horseman. <laughs> and that little chap over there, the, the lonesome-looking fellow. He's a pickpocket. Yes, poor chap. Whenever he gets real lonely, he goes out in a crowd for a little change. <laughs> By the way, have you heard our class yell? It's just one word. Ouch! And our school colors. Black and blue, of course. <laughs> Tonight's Inner Sanctum Mystery, Till Death Do Us Part, was written by Emil Tepperman and stars Everett Sloan in the role of Joe with Mercedes McCambridge as Nancy and is presented by the Emerson Drug Company of Baltimore, Maryland, whose registered pharmacist compound Bromo Seltzer the headache product that's both fast-acting and pleasant-tasting. No wonder in a representative survey, druggers from coast to coast report that Bromo Seltzer is the favorite relief for headache pain at their drugstore fountains. In fact, five times as many of these druggers said that the leader is Bromo Seltzer. And now we can turn to a little matter of murder. Our story tonight begins on a pleasant note the honeymoon couple. But don't start to squirm. The unpleasantness will commence soon enough. Oh, darling, no. Oh, Just look at them. Oh, Joe and Nancy Page, married hardly five hours, <laughs> and parked at the side of the road by the bank of the old mill stream, and whispering sweet nothings to each other. Oh, gee, Nancy, it's wonderful to be married to you. Oh, I do. If the other clerks at Scott's department store could see us now. Uh -uh. No, I don't want anybody to see us. I just want to be alone with you, Joe, for the rest of my life. I hope you don't mind spending our honeymoon in a tourist cabin instead of a swanky hotel. Oh, I love it this way, Joe. The stream rushing past, the moonlight shining on the bridge, and the woods all around us. Oh, look. There's another car. They're parking on the bridge. He's turning his headlights out, too. <laughs> They think they've got privacy. <laughs> Guess they can't see us parked here. Look, Joe. The couple's getting out of the car. Yeah. For a walk on the bridge. Mm -hmm. I wonder if this is their wedding night, too. That's a beautiful car they get. Joe. What? That couple, they're acting very strange. They're having an argument. Joe, look what he just took out of his pocket. Holy mackerel, a gun. He's pointing the gun. I've heard. <laughs> Joe. Joe. He shot her in the face. Holy Mackerel, it can't be. Must be a gag of some kind. No, no, you saw the flashes when he fired the gun, and see how still she lies. Her body's crumpled to his feet. Yeah. Yeah, he, he's picking her up. I bet he's going to throw Joe, her. don't let him. No. No, Nancy, you push my hand down on the horn. He sees us. He'll uh, drive across the bridge. He knows we witnessed the murder. He's got to kill us, too. Oh, Joe, quick, start our car. He'll be here before I can turn the car around. What do we do? We'll duck into the woods. Come on. Oh, quick. What's wrong? Oh, my high heels. I can't run fast. You've got to. Here, throw these bushes. Yeah. Get behind the tree. It's getting out of the car. He has a gun, Joe. He means to kill us. He's coming straight for this tree. He knows we're here. Nancy, we've got to run for our lives. Take my hand. Come on. Nancy, fast! Oh. 
tired, Joe. I can't go much further. We can't stop. He's close behind us. Is he gaining on us? No, but he's still after us. Oh, please, let's stop and rest. Not yet. I saw headlights up ahead. Maybe there's a road. If we can only make it. Joe, I'm through. I, I can't go anymore. Nancy, look. Through the trees. The road. Come on. One last sprint. Here it is, Nancy. The road. Oh, thank heaven. I never thought we'd make it. Is he still after us? Is he still coming through the woods? I don't know. We'll stop the first car that comes along. Oh, no. Oh, now, take it easy, baby. I was thinking of that poor girl lying dead on the bridge. And on our wedding night, too. Oh, here comes a car. I'll stop it. He didn't stop him. He went right by. Joe. What? I think I hear something behind us in the woods. Only the wind in the trees. Suppose... Suppose he should suddenly step out of those woods with his gun. Maybe he gave up. Maybe he went back to take care of that body. Our car is there, Joe. With our marriage license in the glove compartment and the receipt Mrs. Swenson gave us for the cabin. Yeah, he'll know all about us. Who we are, where to find us. We don't know a thing about him. Except his face. The face of a murderer. Come on, Nancy. I think we better start walking. We've got to get to the cabin and phone the police. How much further, Joe? It's just around the bend. Johnny, I'd like to lie down and sleep right here on the road. A fine way to spend a wedding. Night. Darling, look. We're there. Swenson's cabin. Yeah. They're all dark. Everybody's asleep. We'll have to wake up Mrs. Swenson. Use her phone. Joe. What? Look. In front of our cabin. What? Hey. That's our car. The murderer must have come here by another road. To wait for us. I don't see anybody around. Maybe he's in the car. You wait here. I'll go and see. Oh, no, Joe. He'll kill you. Don't worry. We both saw his face. He's got to kill us both. If I go over there alone, he won't shoot until he knows where you are. But I... Now take it easy. Stay back here in the shadows. It'll be all right. It's okay, Nancy. The car is empty. Maybe... He's hiding somewhere close by. No, he must have skipped out. Why would he bring our car back? He wanted to get it away from the bridge. Don't you see? He must have dumped that girl's body in the river, and then he took our car away. No trace. Oh, Joe, I'm scared. Maybe he's hiding inside the cabin, waiting for us. He'd be a sap. One shot would wake up all the people in the other cabins, and Mrs. Swenson, too. He'd never get away with it. Come on. We're going into our cabin and get cleaned up. Then we'll use the phone. Which is right here. There, you see? Nobody hiding here. Holy mackerel. Wait, what is it? Over there. On the bed. Here, Joe! It's the girl's body with her face shot away. Just like we saw her on the bridge. Listening to Inner Sanctum, brought to you by. <laughs> from time to time on this program, you've heard from folks who told how they got speedy relief from headache pain by taking a refreshing glass of Bromo Seltzer. These people write in on their own initiative to say that they appreciate the quick and pleasant headache help that Bromo Seltzer brings. Recently, we received such a letter from Mrs. Katharina Eckerline of Schenectady, New York. Mrs. Eckerline said, One Sunday afternoon, as a young bride of 24, I went for a walk with my husband. On our return home, I developed a headache. My husband went into a nearby drugstore for Bromo Seltzer, which a friend had suggested, and Bromo Seltzer brought me quick relief from my pain. Many years have passed, and ever since that day, I've made sure I had Bromo Seltzer on hand at all the time. Thank you, Mrs. Eckerline. It's no wonder that you and thousands of others always turn to Bromo Seltzer for headache help. For well, Bromo Seltzer not only relieves headache pain, but also helps the stomach upset and jittery nerves that may go with an ordinary headache. So remember that, friends, 
And... Turn to that cozy little honeymoon cabin where Joe and Nancy found the beautiful corpse on their bed. The corpse who'd had her face lifted. Well, that's what you get for shooting off your mouth. But don't worry. Before the night's over, the murderer may have his face lifted, too. On the end of a rope. Now, if that murderer were an Oriental, he might try to save face. But you can't save your face if you lose your head, can you? <laughs> in the meantime, I wonder what Joe and Nancy are going to do with the uninvited corpse in their wedding bed. Don't you? <laughs> well, now, listen, Nancy. We have to think this over. We're in a jam. <laughs> oh, for the love of Pete, Nancy, this is no time to faint. Oh, Joe. Oh, Joe, it's awful. Her face shot away. Don't look at her. Here, sit down. <laughs> Oh, what do we do? I don't know. I've got to think. On our wedding night to have a thing like this happen. Why did he leave her here, Joe? To put us in the spot. The cops will never believe our story now. They'll think we killed her. We killed Joe, we never saw her before in our lives. Nancy, we've got to get rid of her. What is... We've got to take her back. Back to the bridge and dump her right back on the murderer. Oh, no. It's the only thing we can do. Suppose the cops come here and find her. They'll grill us for hours. They'll hold us for the inquest. It might take a week, two weeks. A fine way to spend a honeymoon in jail. Oh, I never thought of that. We've got to do it. We've got to take her back. But that means we have to... We have to lift her up and carry her. I'll carry her. But you'll have to help. Oh, I couldn't. you got to, honey. I couldn't. Oh, what must I do? You go out and get the back door of the car open, and then I'll bring her out. Joe. Joe, they'll find us here with the body. Quick, throw the blanket over. I'll see who it is. No, I can't go near her. Do as I say, quick. I'll try. Give me a minute. Who, uh, who is it? It's I, Mrs. Swenson. This blanket is too short. Uh, uh j- just a minute, Mrs. Swenson. Her feet are sticking out. Get those clothes out of the police. Throw them on top of her. It's the best I can do. All right, sit on the bed in front of her feet. Hurry, Mr. Jones. Uh, uh, coming, Mrs. Swanson. Everything okay, Nancy? Yes, I feel pretty. Bite your lip, do anything, but don't faint now. Oh, uh, uh, good evening, Mrs. Swanson. Good evening, Mr. Stone. I, I I hope I'm not intruding. I saw your light, so I knew you weren't asleep yet. Yeah, hey, uh, we, we were just going to sleep, uh... Weren't we, Nancy? Oh, yes. <laughs> I should have thought you'd been asleep long ago. See, I brought you a jug of my own homemade apple cider. I'll put it right here in some glasses, too. Oh, well, thank you, Mrs. Swenson. It's awfully nice of you. Oh, not at all. It's so nice to have a honeymoon couple. I wanted to do it earlier, but my heart was bothering me. I have a bad heart, you know. Oh, I'm uh, terribly sorry to hear that, Mrs. Swenson. Thank you for everything. Aren't you going to try my cider? I thought you'd like to drink a toast. Well, we're not very thirsty right now, Mrs. Swenson. I... Uh, are we, Nancy? Oh, no, no. <laughs> of course not. Well, now I'll run right along and leave you both strictly alone. Uh, good night, Mrs. Swenson, and, and thank you again. Good night, Mrs. Swenson. Oh, you poor dear, you look all tuckered out sitting there on the bed. I bet you don't even know how to make up a bed. Here, I'll make it up for you. Oh, uh, no. Well, it's the least I can do. Now, you just sit over there on the chair, my dear. Please don't. Why? Well, she she means, uh, uh, please don't bother. Oh, it's no bother. <gasps> what? What's this? We, we, we can explain everything. Shot! She's been shot in the face! Murdered! Oh, please, Mrs. Swenson, it isn't oh. what you think. Murdered! You, you're no honeymooners. You're, you're murderers. Oh, my! Stop that! Let me go! Let me go! Shut up! Stop that! Joe, Joe, look out, you're smothering her, your hand. I'm just trying to stop her yelling. Please, Mrs. Swenson. Joe. Joe, what happened? I I don't know. She just went limp and slid down on the floor. Mrs. Swenson. Mrs. Swenson, are you all right? 
Miss... Oh, what is... She... She's dead. Joe, you killed her. Smothered her to death. I'm a murderer. Me, Joe Stone. A killer. We started out on our honeymoon. And now I'm a murderer. <laughs> oh, I... oh, dizzy for a second. Joe, close to trembling. Fancy. Why, well, she can't look at her face. She's dead. And that one on the bed. We're in a jam, Nancy, in a jam. Oh, Joe, I wish I were dead. They'll hold us for murder, Nancy. <laughs> it was an accident. You didn't mean to kill Mrs. Flint. Yeah, but how will we ever prove that we didn't kill the other one, too? <laughs> we'll never be able to find that guy with the black robes. Did the cops will pin the rap on us. Oh, Joe, take me out of here. I can't stand it. Her on the bed and Mrs. Swenson on the floor. Please, let's go away. Let's go far away. You mean run away? Anything, Joe, anything. But let's not stay here. I won't go to jail, Joe. I won't. Please take me off. Yeah. yeah, we'll get out. We'll keep going. Nobody knows the names. They can't trace us. Come on. Get the clothes packed. <laughs> Close this, believe. I'll close it. You get the other one, Pat. Don't forget anything. Look under the bed. Be sure we don't leave a single thing behind. No, no, we don't leave anything behind. Everything's packed, Joe. Hurry, hurry. All right, I'll take the bags. You put the lights out. Joe. Hey. What? What, Joe? What's wrong? I just thought. Our fingerprints all over the place. Well, what'll we do, Joe? Gotta wipe them off. Off everything. Grab a towel. We'll wipe everything in sight. I think. The bedstead? Yeah. Bathroom. Faucet? Yes. Doorknobs, dresser? Yes, yes. Water pitcher? Yes. All right, that's all. Let's go. No, Joe, no. The cider jug. We didn't wipe that. We didn't touch it. Well, I'll wipe it anyhow. Well, snap it up. All right. Come on, then. I'll feel better in the car. Out on the road. Got anything? I don't know. I can't think. I, I'm numb all over. Oh, darling. Holy mackerel, Nancy. I'm a murderer, a killer. <sighs> Running away. We shouldn't have done it. We shouldn't have run away. Oh, it's not as if you killed her on purpose. It was an accident. Nancy, do you realize you're married to a murderer? I wasn't murdered. It was so easy. So easy to kill. I never thought it could be so easy. All I did was to... Hold my hand over her face. Joe, please. Joe. What time is it? It's almost two o'clock. We've been driving for an hour. Got a cigarette? I think there's some in the glove compartment. I'll get him. Joe. What? Our marriage license is gone. What? Are you sure? It's gone, Joe. It was right here. The murderer. He took it. Why? Why would he take our marriage license? I don't know. I can't think straight anymore. Joe, he knows our names. He knows everything about us. Oh, Joe, there's no use our running away. He knows who we are. We'll always be at his mercy. Oh, gosh, I... <laughs> I feel all in. I... I can't drive anymore. I gotta rest and think. Hmm. We'll pull up at the side of the road. Look, up ahead there, the gas station. Close for the night. We can park there. Yeah. Yeah. Gee, I wish I could sleep for a hundred years. Poor Joe. Here. Put your head on my shoulder. <sighs> the first night of our honeymoon. And maybe the last... Uh, uh, hey, it's daylight. I slept all through the night. I guess I fell asleep, too. It's chilly. Yeah. We should have closed the windows. Mm -mm. Gee, honey, you look pretty with your hair mussed up. <laughs> Gosh, your hands are cold. Here, let me warm them. All right. This is our first morning together, Joe. Yeah. Yeah, our 
first morning together. But this isn't the way I used to dream about it. Oh, baby. How did we ever get into a mess like this? We're back where we were last night. In the same jam. Nothing's changed. Those two corpses still in the cabin. What do we do? Joe, let's not think about it for a while yet. Let's go and find a place for breakfast. Our first breakfast together. And after that, we can go back thinking about it. But at least let's have those few minutes. A sort of stay of execution. Yeah. Okay. There's a place, Joe, a diner. Yep. But I haven't got much appetite. No, what we both need is something hot. Think there's an alarm out for us yet? Joe, please, let's not think about it. No other customers inside. That's good. Good morning. Good morning. You been traveling all night? Yeah. Yeah, all night. Uh, some scrambled eggs, please. Right. That'll take a few minutes. That's all right. We'll wait. And I'll turn the radio up on you. Your friendly neighborhood station with the early morning local news. During the night, death came to Mrs. Hannah Swenson, whose tourist cabins are located on the Bay Park Highway. Yeah. Right yeah, on I heard. Route 27. Mrs. Swenson's body was discovered by Oscar Johnson, the handyman, who was awakened by the sound of a car driving away from one of the cabins. Investigating, he found Mrs. Swenson lying on the floor of cabin three. Dr. Macklin, who was summoned immediately, announced that Mrs. Swenson had died of a heart attack. He had been treating her for a severe heart ailment. A heart attack? But didn't seem but, to but respond I didn't to kill her. Treatment. Joe, he didn't see anything about... The other police are anxious to contact a couple who occupied the cabin and who apparently left during the night. They are traveling in a blue four-door sedan. License number 8N1637. Their names are not known as yet. But if they should hear this broadcast, they are requested to call at the state police barracks. Let's get out of here, Nancy. State police are anxious to establish... Hey, what about your aunt? I can't wait. We're in a hurry. Come on, Nancy. Joe. Oh, Joe, what does it mean? Joe, why didn't he mention the other body? It's a trap, Nancy. Get it? They're keeping Mum about the girl's body. No, Joe, I don't think so. Well, what else could it be? We left two bodies there, didn't we? Shut the motor off, Joe. Maybe the real murderer was waiting close by all the time. And maybe after we left, he went in and took the girl's body away again. I don't like it. I want to get away from here, far wait, away. Wait, Joe, wait. Don't you realize you're not a murderer, darling? You didn't kill Mrs. Swenson. It was a heart attack. That's what they say. I say it's a trap. Let's get moving. Oh, Joe. It's too late. Look. Stay trooper. Yeah. Oh, Joe. He's coming right over here. Sure. He's got this license number. Well, I guess our honeymoon is over. Oh, are you Mr. and Mrs. Joseph Stone? Yes. You're Joe Stone? That's right. And you, lady, you're Nancy Stone? Oh, y- yes, I am. Uh-huh. Well, then, I guess this belongs to you. Thank What? What is it? Yeah, take it. Joe. Joe, it's our marriage license. What, what, where did you get it? Uh, one of our men happened to be cruising down by the old mill stream last night. He saw a fellow get out of a roadster on the bridge carrying a girl's body. The fellow dumped the girl over the rail and our man went after him. They had a gunfight. The fellow got a slug through the heart. When we went through his car, we found this. And on the back of it there, you'll notice he, he wrote your license number. Then you got the murder. Yes, we sure did. But we didn't recover the body of the girl carry downstream. It may take several days to find it. Then then we're not wanted for anything? Well, you're the folks from Mrs. Swenson's cabin last night. We figured you left in a hurry. <laughs> kind of embarrassing to have a thing like that happen on your honeymoon, ain't it? <laughs> well, I can't blame you. Well, then we're free to go on our honeymoon. Yeah, you just come on down to the barracks and sign a statement. And then you can be on your way. Well, uh... Would you mind, officer, just a few minutes? We want to go back in the diner for our honeymoon breakfast. (laughs) Fools you again, didn't we? 
I'll wait till you expected Joe and Nancy to come to a bad end. You know, it's too bad Nancy had to be framed for murder, but uh, we just couldn't resist framing her. She is as pretty as a picture. And, uh, oh, yes. Would you care to hear our recipe for eliminating crime? Well, it goes like this. To prevent a murderer from committing murder, you must commit the murderer before he commits the murder. Think that over for a while, and then you'll be ready to murder someone. Hmm. <laughs> If you're at work or out shopping during the day and suddenly a headache hits you, it's no trouble at all to step up to a drugstore fountain and ask for bromo seltzer. But if you get a headache while you're at home, for example, late at night or first thing in the morning, now that's another thing altogether. You need and want headache help in a hurry. And that's when it pays to have bromo seltzer in the medicine cabinet, ready to bring you the fast headache help you need when you need it. Thousands of people keep bromo seltzer in their medicine cabinets because they find it relieves headache pain quickly and pleasantly and helps the jangled nerves and stomach upset that may team up with an ordinary headache. You see, bromo seltzer is compounded by a special process under the supervision of registered pharmacists. Caution, use only as directed. If headaches persist or recur, see your doctor. But for ordinary headaches, just be sure your medicine cabinet always contains... <laughs> Well, it's time to close that squeaking door for another seven-day rest. Until next week at this time, when Bromo Seltzer brings you another inner sanctum mystery directed by Hyman Brown. Oh, by the way, this month's inner sanctum mystery novel is The Blank Wall. By Elizabeth Sanksy Holding. Next week, a grisly little tale titled Carnival of Death. It's about Joe Backus, who was fat, enormously fat. But that's not what made him different from all the other people in the carnival he traveled with. On one night each month, a strange thing, a frightening thing happened to Joe. Want to know more about it? Be sure to listen next Monday. Until then, good night. Pleasant dreams. Mm. <laughs> this is Dwight Weist inviting you to tune in again next Monday at the same time to Inner Sanctum which is brought to you for your entertainment every Monday by... <laughs> Friends, today is Navy Day. We salute the United States Navy and pause to remind America's young men that the Navy offers great opportunities for career advancement. Find out about the special benefits of a Navy career at your nearest recruiting office. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.